Hello, and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso, and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe. I'm also adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all of my students. I hope everybody is doing well. I'm doing great. Today is a sunny day in Chicago, so I'm always happy about that. Today's tutorial is going to look at, I think, one of the most used commands in Rhino. It might be up for debate, but I think the loft command is used probably the most, if not uh, one of the most used commands. And, and I think there's good reason for that. If we, uh, if I go over to the web and I do a Google search for architecture, actually one of the first <clears throat> examples that pops up is something, a project by Frank Gehry. And any any projects by Frank Gehry will, uh, if you're going to make a 3D model of them, will definitely need to be uh, modeled with the loft command. So it's interesting that uh, his one of his projects turns up first. All right, we got a like on uh, on Instagram. It's great. I like connecting with you guys on YouTube and Instagram. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm looking forward to getting to my next goal of 7,000 subscribers. That would be great. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button. Click on the little bell and choose all to receive all of the notifications. Also connect with me on Instagram at my first name underscore my last name Alfonso underscore Peluso and see what my students and I are up to. We're gearing up for another semester. Uh, we just got a new CNC machine at IIT so pretty excited about that. All right so back to this Google search for for architecture and talking about the loft. So if Frank Gehry, if I think of him as the grandfather of the loft, uh, the grandmother would be, I would have to say, Zaha Hadid. And, you know, if he wanted to create this, let's see if this opens up, it's not, it's not big scale, but if you wanted to create this, this building here, um, a loft might be one of the techniques that you use, a loft sweep, something like that. So I should also mention this is one of a series of videos that looks at some basic Rhino functions. So this is back to the basics in Rhino. I made an extrude video last week. Today is loft. I'm going to make a revolve and a sweep. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another example of uh, an architectural building that would make use of the loft is the Enzo Ferrari Museum by Future Systems in Italy. <clears throat> And you see this magnificent yellow roof here, and uh, this is what I call a shark shark gill. And uh, if you search my YouTube channel, you'll see a video where I show you how to use Grasshopper to make make these shark gills. So this is something we could make in Rhino. We don't necessarily need Grasshopper. Something we could look at today, just making something similar to that. All right, let's uh, let's jump in here. Okay, so here you see just a, a lofted form. So I'm gonna start with a new file. And I'm just gonna work small objects inches. So I'm not really thinking about scale at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to set up my grid so that it's just it just helps me a little bit with, I know I mentioned I'm not really worried about scale, but I like to see some sort of scale. So I'm going to have um, 10 grid lines that are going to be one inch apart and major grid lines every five inches and the snap spacing is going to be one inch. <clears throat> All right. So that just, you know, shows me these five inches by five inch squares here that I can work in. Okay, so what, what is a loft? A loft is a series of curves or closed shapes blended together to make a surface or polysurface. So we're gonna look at both. We're gonna look at one example where it's just curves that we're lofting, 
and then one where we're using closed shapes. It's one or the other. You, you don't want to, you can't combine the two. You can't loft curves and closed shapes back to curves. It has to be either all curves, open curves, I should say, or all closed curves. And loft blends those together to make a surface when you're using just curves or a poly surface when you're using closed shapes. So hopefully I remember to look at that through the what command. Yes, the command is what. All right, so let's start out here uh, just by making a lofted object. So I'm gonna go to my layers and I'm, I like to use uh, some layer, layer management, I guess, strategy. Layer management, management strategy where I keep all my curves and surfaces separately. So I'm making this layer curve and I'm gonna draw this. I wanna draw this on a front construction plan. I don't want to draw it on a world top. I don't want to draw it flat. I want to draw it in elevation basically. So this is where I can use my C plane command and I can use world and then front. Okay, so now you see I'm drawing in th I'm drawing in 3D, but I'm drawing in this vertical plane. Some people would rather just go to the front view. Either way, um, I like drawing in 3D. So I like making use of the construction plane. All right, so I'm just gonna draw a curve and I'm gonna draw an interpolated curve. And what an interpolated curve allows me to do is it allows me to click points and then those points fall on the curve. Okay, and I can you know turn that on and off as need be. Okay, so there I was able to snap to the grid and those points that I was placing we're actually on the curve. All right, so I'm gonna put my C plane back to world top, and I'm gonna use my gumball to make a few copies of this curve. So my gumball is on, and if I select the curve, I'll get the little gumball object, and I'm starting to really like this and make use of it. So I'm, I'm holding the Alt key while I drag it in the Y direction, and that's gonna make a copy for me. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this curve. And my strategy here is if I make a copy of the curve, when I loft these two together, they have the same amount of points or control points. That's what you see what's happening when I select these. And that's how you can make clean lofts. If you draw curves that don't have the same amount of control points, the lofts get messy. So I like this idea of copying and then what I do is I manipulate that, that curve. So for instance, I'm going to select those two points. It looks like I only got one of them. Let me make sure I get both. Okay, bring that down. Okay, and I'm going to make a copy of this one. All right, so I'm going to do a little shark gill situation here and then I'm going to make a copy of this one all right so I'm going to take these two curves and loft them together and we'll get into talking about the the loft styles I think that's really important I had that on the outline Let's make a, a few lofts and then, and then we'll get into talking about the loft style. So for right now, I'm just leaving this set to normal. I, I'm not sure what the actual default is. It remembers the last loft that you did, I know that. So we're just starting with normal and we'll go through these styles. Okay, so we have that and let's set this, maybe set it to shaded to begin with. Okay, and then I'll loft between these two Okay, so you're getting that that kind of that shark gill look there. All right, so that was lofting between two curves. To really look at those loft styles, you really want to be able to be lofting between um, two or more curves. So let's look at that. So let me go back to wireframe. I'm going to get rid of these two surfaces. And I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one. Okay, 
Why don't I make this? It's bothering me that it's not symmetrical. All right, another light. We got the shadow gallery. Hi, the shadow gallery. Shout out to the shadow gallery. Okay, so again, I can select this curve and I can I can manipulate it by manipulating these control points. Okay, so we're gonna see what happens when we loft between these three uh, curves. Now I noticed that one of these points when I moved it, it moved out of the Z plane. So I guess it's something worth mentioning for sure. When I'm moving these points, I'm being very careful that when I move them, I'm moving them just in that, in that one plane, in this case, the Z direction. I'm not moving them out of that Z axis. Okay, let's manipulate this a little more. Okay, that's good enough for now. Okay, so now let's loft between the three curves. So I'm selecting all three curves. I'm going to type in the command loft. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can make this Okay, so we're making it, I'm making it shaded. Okay, all right, so I just wanna look at the different loft styles. And I'll just mention that these loft styles are really, it's really based on the geometry that you're using when you, when you loft and how they actually work. But that's, that's normal, loose. Okay, now what you'll notice about loose, if you look right here in the middle, if I go back to normal, the loose doesn't quite make its way down to that middle curve. So it's a looser loft, it's a looser fit. Okay, then we have tight and it really tightens itself down to the three curves or more that you're lofting to. And then you have straight sections, which is gonna give you just two. It's Straight section doesn't really look, work well with curves, but we'll look at an example with some straight lines where it works really well. And then we have uh, uniform. Hard for me to tell the difference between some of these, maybe like uniform and tight, look really close. They look, they look identical in this case. Okay, and I don't think a closed loft would, would make sense here. It would just, it would go back from the last curve back to the front curve. Um, so, it, you know, it would, in, it would encase it as a three-dimensional object. It doesn't necessarily close the front or the back of it. Okay, actually, it makes a it makes a pretty nice shape, pretty nice form there. I like that. I'm gonna keep that one. Okay, and I want to look at something else there. So when I'm making these lofts, uh, I'm I'm gonna put these on a layer called surface. So SRF for surface. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and hide this. Okay. Now, so we looked at some loft types. Now I want to look at a, a special loft procedure, which is rebuilding, which I really like. So let's, uh, I have some curves here that I'm going to paste in. If I still, if they're still in the computer's memory, that'd be great. Oh yeah, they are. Okay. So let's look at a whole bunch of curves. So this is a lot more, a lot more complex. I'm going to go ahead and scale this way up. So here we have a bunch of curves. Let me just let me just hide everything else but this. Okay, so you see these are 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 quite different. Do they have the same amount of control points? I'm not sure. They might, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and select these, and I'm going to type in the loft command. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this straight line that's connecting them as a way to align the loft so that the loft isn't um, looking like this, where it's really squiggly. Let's see. Let's, uh, so when I go to loose here, got some funky things happening here. Okay, so I want to eliminate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the the seam. I'm going to put it at the top middle of each 
one of these seg sections, I'll call them. Okay, and sometimes that's an endpoint, and sometimes it's a midpoint. I know for, for those of you at home, this is probably really hard to see on the screen, but I'll see if I can make it read a little bit better. So I'm lining these up. So, you know, it's finding a common, um, a common point, I guess, with all of the loft sections and using that. And here I'm using this midpoint. So it's right down the center. And if I looked in a top view, hopefully that'd be pretty close to right down the center of those. Okay, so that's one thing is aligning. In some cases you need to align it. In this case it was it was crucial. Okay, so now and we got this funky stuff in the front. Uh, so now if I put this back to to lose so this one I might be able to, to, to flip this not sure at the moment but that's what's happening right now it, it needs to be flipped so click on the line curves okay see these I'm glad that this happened it wasn't supposed to but I'm glad this really shows it makes this loft tutorial much more rich because you see we have these these arrows okay and this one arrow I can flip it I want to flip that oh I lost my I lost it let's do it one more time this is great though let's do this again so select them all type in loft quickly get these aligned I know it's tough to see at home but you'll see it'll be worth it Hey Pablo, how are you? It's good to good to hear from you. Pablo is one of my one of my former students. I hope everything I hope everything is well, Pablo. Okay, so here's this button, the align curves. I might have went over that a little bit too quick last time, but I click on align curves and then this is the one that I wanna I wanna flip that one. Okay, so and I did that. Click end of curve, end of shape curve to reverse. All right, let's let's do that again. No, it's not letting me flip it for whatever reason. I don't know why. Okay. Typically, it'll let me flip that and then. That was the issue with the front. It was going in the other direction. So the rebuild is something that I think is really great. So you see that I'm rebuilding this with 50 control points and I'm getting <clears throat> a much nicer loft. And we can look at this with our other form as well. All right, depending on how I want that to be, I think I just want that to be, I think this looks best as a, a loose, loose loft. Okay, it didn't stay at loose. Okay. All right, so let's let's take a look at that with our other curves that we made. Okay, so this one, let's hide that. And let's go ahead and loft between these three. And let's do a tight, let's try tight. So a tight loft where we rebuild. Now, 50 control points, I can do 20. Um, I don't know if that'll update. Yeah, that updates once I click out of it. 
So you have your ability to adjust the resolution of the loft, which is really nice. So there's 20, there's 75. Okay, so I can get a smoother loft in this direction. Okay. So it's perpendicular to the curves that you use to create the loft. All right, how are these looking? All right, those are our two lofts. So these are open, these are open-ended. So I'm guessing that if I select this and type in the command what, that in this case, it just says valid surface. Surface doesn't say a closed. It doesn't say poly surface. It's not more than one surface. So it's just one single open surface, uh, which is actually great, which is actually really helpful. And this one, if I type in the command what, uh, so again, valid surface, uh, nerve surface, so not a poly surface. So um, how can I make a poly surface? Well, let's let's look at that. So to make a poly surface, I would need I would need to start with a closed poly line. These were just single curves. Uh, so let's look at that. Doesn't mean I need to make a poly line. Today is all about the curves. Doesn't, need, doesn't mean that I need to make a polyline. Right now I'm gonna make an interpolated curve. Let me draw something here. All right, I'm gonna put this on the curves layer. All right, I'm just gonna mirror this. Move it in closer. Draw, draw some lines between it. Okay. So I'm going to connect the red and the purple lines together. Who knows what that command is? I'm sure I hear people yelling out their join. It's the join command. All right. All right, so look at tightening some of this up a little bit. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. I'm going to turn off the grid snap. All right, so move that in. All right, move some of these in. Just tighten it. Just try and tighten it up a little bit. Okay, so there's there's my base base object. So select that, hold my Alt key down, drag it up. Okay, so I've made a copy of it. All right, so I need to manipulate this object. If I don't manipulate it, then it's it's basically just becomes an extrude. So if I look at this in the top view, I'm gonna go ahead and pick some of these points and manipulate this. So you see that shape and that shape. They're very different, but they have the same amount of control points, which is which is important. And let's take this one and let's make another copy of that. Look at this in the top view. And I'm gonna manipulate this. Okay, so three curves, usually good enough. All right, so let me loft between these three. Okay, so you see here this segment that we aligned before, it's using the same point. It's using that upper left-hand corner of that. So I don't need to, to change those in this case. All right, so let's hit enter. All right, so we have you know our, our normal, we have loose, we have tight. Again, straight sections isn't gonna work well in this one, but we're gonna do one with straight sections. So I'm gonna use loose in this case. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, so now in this case, 
I'm guessing this is going to be a poly surface, okay? All right, so when I select it and type what, uh, it's still showing me a surface, okay? So what happens if I close this? So if I select it and I type in cap, then I'm going to have a poly surface. It says one closed poly surface. So when it remained open, it was still a single surface. If I select it now and type in what, there we go, closed poly surface with three surfaces. So I could either use the cap command like I did, or I can select those three and type in loft. And let's see what happens when I choose closed loft. Uh, it doesn't doesn't do it. All right, so it looks like I have to use the cap, which is which is fine, which is great. Okay, so let's do that again. Select those, type in loft, and go ahead and cap it. All right. All right. One one last thing I'm I'm kind of curious about is when I selected those three curves. And I lofted it. It's something to point out. Is it still using those rebuild with control points? Okay, so it, it's still remembering that, um, which is making uh, a really nice, uniform, smooth, lofted object. Okay. All right, one last, one last look at the loft. Let's look at... Let's look at using some straight lines. I know I said it's all about the curves, but let's do one with a straight line. So I'll make the curve current. I'm going to use the polygon command. And by default, it just makes a, it just makes a hexagon, I believe. Okay. So here's, here's a hexagon. Let's select that and invert and then hide everything else. Okay, so there is our hexagon. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do three hexagons, as you probably guessed. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna copy it vertically. I'm gonna turn off my grid snap and I'm gonna rotate it. And then I'm gonna make another copy of that and rotate it. So I'm just using this when I rotate it, I'm just using this nifty, uh, let me orbit a little bit more, this little nifty blue horizontal circle to rotate it. If I look at this from the top, we can see the rotations of this. So let's look at lofting between these three. Okay, so select all three of these, click the loft command, it's finding those edges as they were rotated. So it's using the exact same point on each one of those levels. Okay, now for this one, I would say using straight sections would be the, the best way to go about it. Okay, so here's normal. Normal is adding some curvature to it. Loose, still some curvature in it. And if you want that, that's, that's fine. Tight, still some curvature. Straight sections takes out out that curvature. Okay, so let's rebuild this with let's say 50 control points. I like I like some more. How about 100? Okay, let's put that on our surface layer. All right. Alright, so let me change this to rendered. Alright. How about some shadows here? Let's make a little crown point. Alright, great. So now we have some, some loft objects here. Let's go ahead and look at our little menu here. <laughs> our little <clears throat> outline, I should say. So we've looked at loft types. 
Uh, we didn't look at extract ISO curve. We didn't look at line weights. So, you know, when I'm working with my students early on before we get into shaded drawings and rendered drawings, we are looking at line weights and line types. So with curved objects, it, it becomes tricky to look at line drawings or create line drawings. So for instance, if I go and I change this to pen and I turn off, let me make my surfaces layer current. If I turn off the curve layer, I lose, I lose some of that curvature, as you can see. I'm just getting the outlines. And in some cases, it's, it looks fine. Like this looks, it looks decent, although I lost the curvature down the middle. This one, I'm losing some of the edges of that. So let's look at this. Let's, I'm gonna invert this. Okay, so this isn't easy. It takes a little time. Uh, you have to dedicate some time to it to make it look the way you want it to look. Okay. Hey, Shannon, shout out to Shannon, one of my students over at IIT. All right, hope you're doing well, Shannon. I'm gonna see you in my, I think maybe in ARC, oh, you took it over the summer, ARC 436. All right. So I want to add some lines back into the front of this. So I'm going to change this back to wireframe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this layer heavy. Heavy or thick for my thick line weights. Make that current. So I'm going to make that thick. I'm going to make the print color black. And I'm going to make the print width. I'm going to go with a 0.7. See how that works out. OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm, I need to see some ISO curves. So if I go back to the pen drawing, I want to see some horizontal lines here, some ISO curves in that. So I can extract those. I can also extract some vertical ISO curves. So let's, let's do that. Let's change this back to wireframe. Let's go to extract, extract ISO curve. Okay, select my surface. Okay, so these are these are my vertical ISO curves, okay? So that's the U, U direction. If I click here, I can toggle it to the V direction, and I can just, I'm just clicking, and it's, and it's placing those, okay? And I believe it's putting those on the thick layer for me, okay? Nope, it kept them on the original layer, which is fine. And select those, put those on the thick. Right, let me try this one more time, get these on the thick layer. Let's see what layer these are on with the good old what layer name, it's on thick. Okay, I think I need to turn print display on. That's what it is. So print display is not on, so it's not showing me these print colors. So print display, set that to on. Okay, there you go. A little thicker than they need to be, so let's try 0.5. Okay, so, you know, this probably needs some, some vertical lines in it too. You know, I don't want to overdo it with the lines, but let's let's take a look at it. So we can do this. I don't know if I can do this in a in a pen view, but I'll try it. I doubt it. So extract ISO curve was the command. Select the surface. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, let's try it again. No, I have two two surfaces. Oh, yeah, the top and the. Okay, so we're gonna go in the other direction. So I'm gonna toggle that direction to the U, and make some here. All right, let's go back to pen. All right, not too bad. A little too grid-like for me, I would say. Um, probably don't need this one. Okay. 
I really like just the two edge ones. I don't really love these. I think I get a reading of it just from the from the shape. All right, let's make this back to to render and show everything that we have here. All right, let's uh, let's check one more time our outline. Oh, we have the, the print the PDF and the raster output. Just want to look at that. Hey, Caleb, another former student. Shout out to Caleb. All right, so look at print the PDF and raster output. We've been looking at this a little bit recently. So let's orbit my view a little bit. So I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna put this on my surface layer turn off my curves all right so let's go ahead and I'm gonna print so I'm gonna use control P universal print okay so I'm gonna put a link at the end of this video to custom paper sizes so we've been using 4 by 10 as our custom paper size so you can set any any size you want in Adobe PDF so look for that link at the end of this video uh, this is landscape so I'm using raster output. If I change this to vector output, it can't print what we see in the display. It's gonna just print the original wireframe view. So only wireframe can be printed at vector. Anything other than wireframe has to be printed at raster output. All right, let's just print that. Again, not going into too much detail on that because you're gonna find that in the um, link at the end of this video. see what this looks like if it opens it up automatically all right perfect very cool all right so if you found this video helpful let me know click on a on a like down below leave me a comment also you're gonna see my head pop up you can click on that to subscribe to my channel go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel click on all the bells for the notifications Click on the link to learning how to make a custom PDF and also looking at another video with some basic Rhino rendering techniques. All right, that's it for the Rhino Loft. I will see you next time.